I'm an artist, which is to say that I do a lot of different things to make a living. Um, I teach. Uh, I teach. Uh, I've taught workshops for all of these institutions, and most recently taught my first uh, quarter-long course as a guest lecturer at Stanford Arts. That's that's one way that I um, that I am an artist or make a living as an artist. I also do commercial work. I largely uh, do client work, uh, work in productions actually, and I um, I've had the pleasure of working with Name the Machine with uh, Brought and Dolly when they were doing production, and then also um, doing some of my own work. So a lot of the work that I do in this capacity is what I call uh, media, working as a media developer. So I actually do a lot of the, the back end of these productions. So, um, so in this case here, this is uh, the uh, Intel's CES um, presentation. I, I worked with uh, Yago and Name the Machine to create some like audio, reactive, and gesture controlled uh, video. Uh, I worked on uh, Beck's Blue Moon tour, including the Coachella performance, to make uh, live live visuals for that. And I worked on with Name the Machine on Bass Nectar's immersive music tour, making um, a custom media server that um, was controlled live by the performer's um, uh, Ableton set, and so he could like jump and skip around in uh, within the videos as he was playing the music. Uh, as Colin mentioned, I worked for three years at Obscura Digital doing uh, large-scale projection ma mapping and uh, custom, again, custom media systems. So, you know, at uh, huge architectural scale work as well as some stage performances. Uh, and, and I've released my own tools along these lines. I, I released my own uh, uh, live visual performance uh, framework built on the, um, the software Touch Designer. And then also, <laughs> I make art. So this is some of my, my own work. So I work in installation and I work in performance. And um, my artistic interest in these areas is in making work that is engaging um, in a physical space that sort of is fleeting or ephemeral and that you sort of have to experience in person. So I love working with performers, with dancers, because they, you know, they, they bring all of this presence um, uh, to the work. and. Uh, and then I also like working with installations so that people can really um, experience the work very directly. What ties all of this together is, uh, is real-time video from a technical perspective. This is like a new media and, and design program, and so I, I know that you all would be um, much more interested in, in sort of process and technique than some other audiences. And so real-time video, what I mean by that is um, basically taking advantage of developments in uh, gaming technology that allow for um, you know, very fast rendering, and um, and so this has um, it, this really lends itself to um, projection mapping. You know, live and reactive content. Um, you know, whether reacting to musicians or to dancers, and um, and also th there's this other feature about it that it can sort of it allows you to maybe algorithmically or computationally create sort of endless content, something that can sort of unfold and, and keep going um, indefinitely. And that's, uh, that's a quality that I really enjoy. And I, um, and I am sort of fascinated by this as, um, as a craft, I suppose, and it's something that I just sort of love doing. And so I continue to do it um, in all of these different ways and capacities. Uh, so for example, just to like explain this a little bit more. So like quick overview, now I'm gonna talk um, kind of explain like the way that I use real-time video in these in these uh, capacities. So, this is a projection mapping project um, uh, that I did with Obscure Digital. This is the um, installed in the San Francisco MoMA as part of um, uh, the show The Utopian Impulse, which is about Buckminster Fuller's influence on the Bay Area. And we collaborated with filmmaker Sam Green. Uh, he made a documentary about Buckminster Fuller in the Bay Area and we projection mapped it onto this custom fabricated uh, sculpture. So, um, so my role in this, um, you know, the fabricators made this beautiful um, sort of unfolded Dymaxion um, buckyball. And then um, other people on my team did the projection design. So there's three short throw projecto projectors inside of the sculpture. And then my role was to um, like work with the, um, the documentary artist and create a media template so that they could lay out, you know, in After Effects, uh, all of their content, and then I would run it through like my pipeline and system, and it would fit with the 
sculpture. And so this is a way of combining real-time video with the traditional media pipeline to sort of create something like new and interesting um, or, or like more spatial. So, uh, so I designed the template and then um, sort of taking advantage of like, like the, the render pipeline, I can sort of like move and adjust that, that content very geometrically to match the, um, the sculpture. So uh, I also had the, for the great fortune of like working on some really, um, really large architectural projects. So this is the uh, Sheikh Zayed Grand Mosque in Abu Dhabi. And um, for the United Arab Emirates 40th National Day, we were commissioned to do, um, to do these projections on the mosque. And um, so, uh, so the, the theme for the work was basically the um, the glory of, of God and the unity of mankind, which is always like a pretty noble um, undertaking. So, <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> yeah. So we we spent um, we spent like over a month on site. I did a site visit. We we laser scanned the building. Um, we you know created a model of it. We did projection design. We used um, 48 projectors, uh <laughs> a lot of media servers. And, and my role was to sort of make all of these render together in sync, even though we had them in at multiple sites around, around the building. So this, uh, this building is about the size of, um, of two Manhattan blocks. So we had like a couple of different control rooms. So we had some media servers here, some media servers there. These are towers of projectors um, to give you a sense of scale. In my work, I, um, in my professional and commercial work, I've sort of integrated them into my artistic practice. Uh, this is a piece uh, called Carapace. I made this in collaboration with my friend Cadet Cooney, who is an audio and visual artist. Uh, she did the audio for this. I did the video. Um. <laughs> There's a lot of footage of me like looking up, actually, <laughs> because it's a, a pretty large space. <laughs> so, uh, I th I th the carapace, the piece you we just looked at, um, that's sort of like as, as, uh, as like embodied of an experience as I can make right now with um, with video alone. My VR VR accepted. Actually, we'll let Jono talk about that. Um, so this other avenue through which, um, in which I'm like now interested in working is in sort of creating more material work instead of just digital work. Um, and so right now I'm an artist in residence at uh, Autodesk's Pier 9, and I've been working with uh, digital fabrication, like uh, 3D printing. Um, so, but of course this is like, um, again to come back to the theme of the journey, I really appreciate you opening with that. Um, this is kind of building on some ideas that I had um, like four years ago. So in, in 2012, I made this piece. This is called Sometimes I Dream the City. And this is, um, this is video projection on, um, on this like plotted drawing. I made this by um, taking a bunch of photos. I rode my bike around the city. And then I, I photoshopped, like collaged them into this kind of like imaginary city block. Um, with an interest kind of in like the character of the city rather than on any sort of one iconic building. Um, and then I plotted it out in strips um, and like assembled them on the wall. And then I took video portraits of my friends and sort of programmed this to sort of endlessly like bring their portraits into these different um, surfaces of, of the city. Um, and I did this as an installation. So this is kind of this like, combining like the the drawing on the paper with the digital video um, kind of creates this effect that, that I really like. You know, the the um, the drawing feels like more I don't know. It's like more dynamic, more alive. Um, but then the, the video also feels more substantial because of that uh, that sort of material element. So I also made this piece in 2012. This is uh, as machines shine, 
and uh, so I, I laser cut a lot of a lot of pieces of wood and put them together and um, and then projection mapped that um, and you can kind of see this content over here it's not like on the screen it doesn't really look th like that it doesn't look that interesting some, or it doesn't look nearly as good as it looks on the on the object um, like this sort of has this this way, uh, it really kind of brings this to life in this way that I think is interesting, and um, and the combination of the two is like, uh, you know, the sum is much greater than than the um, than the parts. So I wanted to that was in 2012. Um, and so I sort of wanted to come back to those ideas and get into, into them more and like try more uh, digital fabrication. So um, I've been doing that at the pier, which has sort of state of the art digital fabrication uh, facilities. Um, what I'm doing is also known as CAM, or computer-aided manufacturing. Um, this image, this is a uh, five-axis uh, CNC router. The CNC stands for com computer numerical control, as opposed to just regular numerical control, which would be like a jacquard loom, or these, uh, these like forms of computation that predated computers. Um, yeah, so, so even even when I'm using these really sophisticated tools, I always start with a sketch. This is like kind of the way, that's like the most direct way for me to actually connect to my creativity. Um, so I'm just gonna take you through this process. It's a new process to me, and so I'm really excited about it, and so hopefully it'll be interesting to you. I'm sure that some of you try, have tried some 3D printing or some other like uh, digital fabrication techniques. Um, but yeah, so, so th this is how I'm approaching it. Uh, so I, you know, I, I sort of refine my sketch and turn it into like a three-dimensional model. This is like two and a half D. So it's just like you know, kind of flat. Um, so then I took that uh, model from the modeling software to the CAM software, the CAM Computer Aided Manufacturing. This is going to allow me to create tool paths for the um, the router. So. So it does a lot of the work for me, but I still have to be kind of strategic um, and creative, you know, and do like creative problem solving to like actually create the thing that, that I've designed. So this is a screenshot um, from Inventor, the CAM software that I've been using. And you can see that um, these are all of the tool paths that are required to make this. So we have like a facing path to take the top of the stuff off the top and then like big tools and some like little tools. So, <laughs> um, so here, for example, is, um, is one of the main passes. This like removes the most material, um, and I think this is with like a half-inch end mill. So I spend all of this time in the computer before even approaching the machine, and I sort of double check m that my simulation is what I want. This is um, pretty accurate uh, simulation software. It like shows me this is like what's going to come out at the end. Uh, so then, of course, I get like the real objects, which is which is new to me. I have to go and like um, talk to the hardwood people. They're so helpful. Um, here's a close-up of the machine. And then I think the you know the 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 downside of this process is that it actually a lot of the material kind of goes to waste. Um, here's the uh, DMS. In action, I, this is my favorite tool in the shop. It's you can see the the head. It's it's kind of about the size of a dog, and it moves around in this sort of like this like cat-like way, and um, and then it's also th there's this whole process where where I sort of have to manually load in the tools, and so I'm like come here and like put it, give it the tool, and like go over there, and it feels kind of like interacting with an animal or like playing fetch. So I, I've I've developed this affection for it. I've also spent like maybe 20 hours with it now, so we're friends. <laughs> Uh, and so, so this was like, and see, this is so much like the uh, the simulation. This is what came out. Um, uh, and then, and then the other side of this is that that I, I like designed these sort of aluminum inlays. And so, uh, for the first time, I'm kind of having to think about tolerances and these things that you don't have to ever worry about when you're making video. Um, so this is a uh, another five-axis machine. This is the Omax uh, water jet. And so this. Uh, sprays water at uh, 50,000 to 60,000 pounds of pressure with um, some sand in the mix. And so it can cut through pretty much anything, vacuums, 
a marble. Um, and so and it's very precise. So I used it to cut out the aluminum, um, the lids for the box and the inlays. Here they are. And so, and so then, uh, this is also something that I still have to learn is how to like properly finish wood. It's a craft and I'm very new to it. Uh, and so this is the finished object. So I'm, I kind of think of this as an exercise, but it's, um, it's very fun. Um, and my, my current work is to sort of use these processes with translucent materials in order to then combine them back with video. So, oh, there's a detail. So this is my current project. I actually started this last year. This is called Gilded in Unreal. And it's a piece that combines digital fabrication and digital video. So the processes of making these are, you know, it's very similar. There's like modeling, and then I render it, or I, you know, machine it. Um, and unlike projection, I'm actually using, I'm actually using a screen with this instead of a projector because um, now I'm interested in screens. And there's just different things that you can do with them. For example, like create um, like diffusion or clarity, where it's like production is kind of always in focus. Um, and, and I also kind of want the two things, the video and the object, to come together as one like unified experience uh, instead of being like a surface treatment. And so that's what I've been thinking a lot about is like how to, how to combine these things and how to design content that like enhances a form um, in such a way that it feels like they, the two are interdependent and that they, they kind of like one doesn't really make sense without the other. So this is a screenshot of um, of the model. I, I made this in Maya. You know, it's kind of a mix of like like lofting and then you know like a lot of like polygon modeling. Um, uh, you know, and it's designed in such a way that it can like be milled and vacuum formed. Um, of the tool. I'm still very enamored by the tools. Um, so I, I had this milled. I, I still didn't know how to, how to cam at the time. Um, so this is high density, um, like a polyurethane foam. Um, this is a four foot by eight foot by four foot router. And, um, and again, it like produces all of this, just like a lot of waste, but um, which I'm vacuuming up here. This is sculpture foam, so you, it's really a very versatile material. You can laminate it and do all kinds of things with it. Uh, so I, I did this in LA, so I took it to the Warner Brothers shop um, because um, they'll, they'll actually do some fabrication there. So then I had it vacuum formed. This is again, this is a four foot by eight foot. Um, vacuum former here so this is a uh, pet G plastic it's very hot hot enough to like droop down and drape over the model and then it's sucked on over the model and then it cools and it's uh, <laughs> it's this surface um, pet G is like what your water bottle is made of um, so I take the model then into my rendering software this is touch center I use it all the time um, and create content sort of based on that geometry. So this is like basically digital lighting. And um, I, diff I diffuse the plastic. So, so there's sort of this play between like the clarity of where it's flat and laminates to the screen and where it, it kind of pulls away and has this like voluminous diffusion. And, um, and th those are, that's, my, that's my thing right now though. 